Well, look at that. Here we are again, hunting for uniques side by side. Hello friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legion Gaming, and today we're sharing three more insanely quick ways to farm uniques in Minecraft Dungeons. Before we dive into the fray, let's talk about the setup. As with all things in Minecraft Dungeons, it's incredibly important that you're prepared before you dive into a biome. There are a few different ways to go about doing this, but instead of sharing my build like I did in the first video, let's talk about some gear and enchantments that could work for you. First off, let's talk about the gear. The first thing you're looking for is anything with a movement speed increase. This includes things like the evocation robes, the archer's armor, heck, even the highland armor will work. All you're trying to do is increase your baseline speed. Now, the second thing to consider is cooldown reduction. We'll be spamming movement artifacts left and right, and you'll need them available as soon as possible if you hope to get through the dungeons unharmed. There are a few unique items that'll work really well in this situation, like the battle robe or evocation robe. And there are even some great uniques that'll work too, like the ember robe that combines both speed and artifact cooldown reduction. But there is a kicker. Any piece of gear will work if you're lucky enough to get the cooldown enchantment. At tier 3, this will reduce artifact cooldowns by 27%, a huge number when combined together or synergized with other gear. At the end of the day, you're trying to stay alive and move fast through each dungeon you're farming, so keep an eye out for those essential things. Movement speed increase, artifact cooldown reduction, and enchantments. Now we turn to the artifacts, the real stars in these builds. You have a variety of options, and they'll all work, but you need to find what works for you. We'll start off with the Ghost Cloak. This provides a 15% movement increase for 6 seconds and allows you to pass through enemies. Because we won't be fighting, there are going to be a ton of enemies in the way, making this an essential item. The second artifact is the Boots of Swiftness, which provides a huge burst of speed for 2.5 seconds. You could go double Ghost Cloak if you want, but I personally enjoy Boots of Swiftness more. The shorter cooldown may not seem like much, but it helps stagger the use of the two primary speed artifacts. Another option is the Death Cat Mushroom, and this is really the flex pick. You may have to fight, that's just the reality, and having that burst of attack speed provided by the Mushroom is really nice. You do gain a slight burst of movement speed when you activate the Death Cap, so it's not a complete waste of a slot, and more often than not, the added benefit of running with this item will far outweigh any additional speed you might gain otherwise. Now that we have our gear, we're ready to start farming. You'll want to set the game to the highest possible difficulty you can. This will ensure that you're getting the best possible loot drops from the maps. The same can be said when you're buying items from the blacksmith. You'll gain a nice chunk of emeralds using these farming methods, and making sure you have the highest possible power level gear equipped will give you the best chance for high level uniques. Your character level doesn't have an impact on the gear you purchase, just your power level. I've seen a lot of confusion on this topic, so be sure to mix and match whatever gear you have that gives you the highest possible power level before you buy. That's what really matters. Our first stop today is Pumpkin Pastures, and this one can be a bit frustrating, but a little persistence goes a long way. Some of the secrets and chests we'll be talking about today aren't guaranteed, which is why we'll be focusing on some of the more consistent ones. The goal is to maximize your time, not go in and out of levels trying to catch a lucky break. So with that in mind, let's kick this off. There are two chests we are really after here. Everything else is a bonus, and it all depends on your RNG. Burst through the beginning portion of the level until you get to the first ship. There are two layouts here, but this is the one you're looking for. Roll across to the island and a small chest will spawn. It's not much, but it's there about 50% of the time, which makes it worth talking about. Now this next chest is guaranteed, 100%, and it's the only one we're really after. Keep following the quest markers until you get to the broken wall. Veer right and locate this tree. Roll across the gap and a gold chest will spawn. Now it's no obsidian chest, but it's easy to get to, and more often than not, you'll get a decent piece of loot. Everything else after this is gravy. Move right and roll along the gap, and head down the path leading upwards. At the end of the main path will often be a crypt, but what's inside is a complete roll of the dice. Sometimes you'll get lucky and get a gold chest. Other times you'll get two standard chests. I've seen videos where people found an obsidian chest in this location, but I've yet to encounter one after 100 plus runs, so keeping your sanity in mind, I wouldn't stress about it. If there's no crypt, don't panic, it's not always there. Return to camp, head back to Pumpkin Pastures, 
and run it again. It's not the best farming map in the world, but it takes less than three minutes to go through the steps I just mentioned, so hopefully it'll bring you one step closer to some long sought after uniques. Our next farming spot takes us to Cacti Canyon, and this one is definitely a step up in terms of difficulty. We're after two golden chests here, and the first one is surrounded by about 500 enemies. If you have a piece of gear with Potion Barrier, this is a great time to use it. That damage reduction gives you the perfect window to open the chest and hightail it out of there. If you don't have Potion Barrier, you may have to fight. How you go about that is really up to you. TNT, artifacts, it really doesn't matter. Just buy yourself enough time to get in, get your loot, and get out. Now the second chest is much easier to reach and it's fairly consistent. Run through to the portion of the map where you have to activate the beacons. Run to the back of the area, up the stairs, and head across the bridge to the top. Wrap around to the right and you'll see a small island. Roll across and a gold chest will spawn, but be warned, this chest is finicky and the items will fall down into the gourd, so spam your interact button as soon as you open the chest to ensure you don't miss out on any loot. Now we could go further into the level, but the next golden chest is pretty much at the end, and that's a waste of your time, so head back to camp and reset. This run takes a little bit longer depending on how long it takes to clear the area around the first chest, but it's still a great way to get two consistent gold chests and a chance at some great uniques. Our final stop today takes us to the Fiery Forge, and oh baby, is this one a pain. There are so many secrets in this level that it's hard to determine what's worth going after, and what's not, so we'll leave the decision up to you. This is one map I check every time I zone in. 10 secrets or higher and I run the whole thing, but less than that and I return to camp and load in again. It's not a great system, but if I'm going to spend my time hunting uniques, I wanna make it worth my while, and there's a lot up for grabs when the map rolls right. Now the first chest is easy and always there. Run through the outdoor area until you get to the entrance of the forge. Right before entering, head up to the right and you'll spawn a standard chest. Now here is where the fun begins. Zone into the forge and make your way through to the first supply box. If you open your map and see this sort of outline, you're in luck, and a special area has spawned. Head inside and explore everything. Like the Pumpkin Pastures Crypt, sometimes you get one golden chest, other times you get none. But there are two things in here that are really special. As far as I know, this is the only place in the game where you can get two obsidian chests. The first is across this gap. Roll from the bridge onto the island, and from the island onto the platform. The second requires some insane luck. Occasionally, in this volcanic crypt, you'll see a diamond sword in a stone. If you interact with it, you'll have to face a small wave of enemies. Defeat them, and it opens up a secret room where, yes, another obsidian chest awaits you. Now, if you're feeling froggy, you can continue on through the main portion of the map following the quest markers until you reach the overload the core section of the dungeon. Here, there are usually two crypt gauntlets and a gauntlet atop a bridge. If you want to take the time to fight through the waves of mobs, that's entirely up to you. Each will reward you with one golden chest, so you could cash in on three more, potentially. But the added time fighting enemies isn't great. Plus, you have to run through hordes of enemies to reach this section. If you're not confident in your skills to speedrun and potentially fight, I'd say stop after the Volcanic Crypt, but if you like the challenge and want to maximize your profits, push on Dungeon Diver, push on. So there you have it, three more tried and true methods to farming uniques in Minecraft Dungeons. I know we blazed through those really quick, so if you want to see how I run through each of the three levels start to finish, check out the links in the description below. We know there are also other methods out there people are working on, so if you want to share your favorite farming spots, leave us a comment in the section below, or head on over to our Discord and show us the video yourself. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to Legion Gaming if you want more Minecraft Dungeons in your feed. Finally, if you want to support Legion Gaming even more, check out our brand new Patreon page. For just a few bucks, you get some awesome rewards like access to our private Minecraft servers and custom-designed monthly artwork. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legion Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.